guys, it's Sarah. And today we're going to talk about my April wrap up. I started out the month really slow, very slow. And then things picked up. I read some stuff that I was able to get through really quickly. So it ended up being a pretty good month for me. I ended up finishing 10 books and then I have one DNF that was at the very end of the month. So very recent, but yeah, so we are going to go through them quickly. A few of these I have vlogged, so I won't go into a whole lot of detail about my thoughts and feelings because I've already done that. So any vlog or video where I've already talked about some of these books, I will leave link down below if you guys want more of my thoughts, but I'll do it very, very uh, shortly here since we do have a lot to get through. Okay, the first one that I have here was a five-star prediction, and that is Where the Lost Wonder by Amy Harmon. Uh, my gosh, I love this book so much. Uh, this one was definitely five stars. I talk much more about that in my five-star prediction follow-up that we just did, but all of the book darts have gone into this book, you guys. This is a historical fiction that follows a group of people who are traveling on basically an Oregon Trail type of journey. And one of the men that is on this journey with them is half Pawnee and half white. And when the caravan comes across a lot of different Native American groups, there's a lot of conflict usually, and him being half Indian can sometimes help them, sometimes hurt them. And you're also following a love story between John, who is this uh, half Pawnee man, and Naomi, who is a woman who is traveling with the group. And it is beautiful, and I love them. So many of my book darts are just things that they were saying to each other, and I just loved it. It was phenomenal. The writing was great. I want to read more by this author for sure. This one I listened to on audio, and the narrators, uh, there were two of them. One of them was Lauren Enzo, and the other one was Sean Taylor Corbett, and they were both fantastic. And then I read some books for our Booklist Backlist Readathon, which I do have a vlog for, so I will leave that link down below. First one I read was Verity by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover is one of my favorite authors of all time. I will purchase and read <laughs> anything that this woman writes, and I loved this. I cannot believe it took me so long to read this one because this came out in 2018. But um, again, so many of the book darts in here. Loved it. Loved it complete five stars. I flew through this in two days and it is a more of a mystery thriller book for Colleen, which she doesn't normally write. She usually writes, you know, romance books, but this was fantastic. There is a romance in here, but it's more of a mystery thriller and there is an author involved and it's all very mysterious and you're trying to figure out what's going on the whole time. And it's just, it kept me guessing the whole time and I loved it. So um, huge recommendation for this one, definitely. But if you want more about my thoughts and stuff, I will leave that link down below. But this was a total five stars as well. Another book that I read for the readathon was Love Lettering. And this is by Kate Claiborne. This is a book that actually Lindsay sent me for our Christmas book exchange as well. So that was exciting to get one of those read. And this is a contemporary book that follows a woman who her job is actually like, hand lettering. That's her actual job. And she has made a career out of it. She's become very popular in the New York City area. She's very sought after. And you're following her building a relationship with a former client. And so that's very interesting. I kind of love the way that their relationship started and bloomed and things that were happening that brought them together. I really thought that was a really cool concept. And I enjoyed it. I listened to this one on audiobook. And the narrator is Nicole Zanzarella. And I thought it was great. So it was fun. I listened to it really quickly. And it was just a cute romance. I really liked it. It was four stars for me. And then the third book that I ended up reading for our readathon <laughs> is Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. And I think this might be my favorite book of the month, you guys. I loved this with every fiber of my being. This book was so good. This follows a couple, Nathan and Oliver. They are living in DC, which is local to me, which is nice. And uh, so Nathan is a surgeon at Walter Reed Hospital, which I have been to quite a bit <laughs> with my family um, being military. And uh, so that was kind of cool. And then Oliver is his partner um, and he is an addict and not really, 
he struggles a lot with addiction and with impulses and things like that. And he doesn't make the best decisions in his life in general, <laughs> basically. He knows this about himself. He makes the really bad decision to visit a bathhouse while Nathan is away at a conference. And he is doing this because he feels like he needs to spice things up. He feels very stagnant. He wants something interesting. He just, he needs something because he feels like he's suffocating in his life. And so he, he visits this bathhouse, which is a place that men can go and be with other men. And it's anonymous and it's just, it's a place like that. So he goes and he meets a man and uh, he ends up leaving the establishment almost like almost being killed. He runs for his life literally out of the establishment because the man that he meets actually tries to kill him while they are alone in a room. And from there, you're seeing Oliver trying to cover up the fact that he was even at this bathhouse because he doesn't want his partner to know that he was going there to be unfaithful. And at the same time, <laughs> trying to actually catch this guy because he tried to kill him. So it's just, oh my gosh, it is just like lie after lie, after deception, after cover up, after reveals, after everything. I mean, I was guessing this whole time about like what in the world was going on. It was so good, you guys. Like, I just, I cannot talk about this book enough. I loved it so much. And this one also has a decent amount of violence in it and um, some graphic, like, sexual scenes and stuff as well. Not, like, super graphic, but definitely described. So there is that as well. So just um, fair warning on that. But I loved this book. Again, another author I want to read more from now. Anything it comes out with in the future, I will be picking up because this has shot up to one of my favorite books of the year so far. Five stars, if that wasn't obvious. Okay, the next one that I read was a book that I listened to, and that is Circuits of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. This is another one that I listened to on audio, and I really liked the audiobook. I think the narrator was great. It was Tuppence Middleton, and I thought she did a great job. So this was one of my most anticipated books this year because it is set in a circus setting, and we are following a young girl. This is set in the 1860s, I believe, and we follow a young girl whose father sells her to the circus because he is desperate for money, and he just sells her because she has spots on her that they are now kind of considering her like a leopard girl, if you will, and she becomes part of the circus act where she's like a wonder and you follow her in the circus and meeting people and making friends and building relationships and doing all these things. And the leader of the circus is very uh, power hungry and just believes that everything is perfect and he deserves all this accolade and he's so great and he created the circus and he he just, blah, one of those, right? So when she starts taking away so much attention from him, he starts feeling threatened. And so it gets very dangerous for her as far as um, being in the same area as this man. And I was a little bit let down by this one. To me, it was just okay. Um, I liked the relationships that she was building. I liked the friendships that she was building. But overall, I didn't really feel like a whole lot happened. Like, yeah, her dad sold her and she got into the circus and ended up actually really loving being there, even though her life was in danger a little bit. She still really cherished her found family. So there's a big found family aspect in here, but I don't know. I just kind of, the book ended and I was like, okay. Like, I didn't feel like it was thrilling. I didn't feel like it was super interesting. I didn't like <laughs> where the romance went at the end. And I just, I don't know. I just, I felt very underwhelmed by it, I guess you could say. For some for something that I was super excited for, I just felt like, won't want about it. So I gave this one three stars. Um, the writing was also a little bit repetitive. There was a certain phrase that was just said over and over and over. And I'm just like, we know, we got it. 
okay. <laughs> so it was definitely one of those things. I just noticed it a lot. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It was just three stars for me. Okay. The next one was a beast. And this is one that I started in early March. <laughs> <laughs> I finally finished it in April, and that is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. This is book number seven in the Throne of Glass series. It is the final book in the Throne of Glass series, so I will obviously not tell you the plot or what it's even about, because, hello, ending of a series. Um, I will say, I do have a complete spoilery reading vlog for this one, if you guys are interested in that at all. Um, if you've read it and you want to know my very, very detailed <laughs> thoughts along the way of reading this book, you can watch that. Uh, if you have not read it, please don't watch it. But I gave this one three stars. And this one and the previous book, number six, which is Tower of Dawn, these two are my least favorite of the entire series. Now, does that mean I'm not going to recommend the series? Absolutely not. I think you should read it. This might be something where I just waited too long <laughs> to read these last two books in the series. I feel like maybe I should have read them sooner and maybe it would have kept the momentum up for me and just wanting to finish it. And, you know, it might have made me more excited, but... <sighs> I felt it was like a little boring and it's the last book in a series and we're leading up to this huge thing and I was bored through a lot of it and I almost got into a reading slump because of it. It took me a month to read this book. Yes, it's almost a thousand pages, so sure, but her books typically go really quickly for me regardless of how long they are because I usually can't put them down. This one I was able to easily put it down and I did not like want to pick it up all the time. So it just took me forever. But I will say Dorian's still my favorite and stuff he does in here is why I will die on that hill. I will die on Team Dorian's hill. But yeah, so however, I have finished the Throne of Glass series, so I feel very, very good about that. I will keep this book on my shelves, obviously, because it's the last book in a series, so I'm going to keep it. And yeah, so uh, ah, I don't know. It just, I, I felt very, again, underwhelmed by this. I thought this was going to be like this huge nonstop action, you know, battle after battle, which there was battle after battle, but it wasn't thrilling the way I wanted it to be. And I was getting really like annoyed at some of the characters and things that they were doing. So I don't know. It was very weird. It was a very weird reading experience. I'm definitely in the minority and not loving this book. So take that however you want. Okay, so the next one that I read was another five-star prediction, and that is Razor by Tears. This is by S.A. Cosby. Oh, this book, you guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> this book follows two men who are both ex-cons. They are brought together because both of their sons have been murdered and their sons were married. So they both had gay sons that were married and they have now been brought together with like the grieving of that. And the investigation into who killed their sons is not going anywhere. It's actually kind of going cold. So the police don't know who did this. They're losing leads. They don't know what's going on. So these two men decide to come together and pull some of their resources together because they have some and try to figure it out on their own. And they go on this investigative journey, if you will, and use some of their um, learned skills from being in jail to shake out some answers from people and figure out what's going on and who killed their sons and why. They are both also dealing with a lot of regret with how they treated their sons when they were alive because neither one of them were very accepting of their lifestyle. So that was um, a whole thing in here as well. There's also a lot of talk about racism in here because I, one of our main characters, Ike, is black and then Buddy Lee is white. And so, you know, there's a lot of interactions and society stuff with that as they're navigating all this stuff as well. Whew. Okay. This book was so fantastic, you guys. The writing was amazing. <laughs> like, it was amazing. Just the way that he described things was so good. Um, this is set in Richmond, Virginia, which is, you know, an hour and a half from me. So like I've been there before. And so he talked about some things like landmarks that I've seen. And that was really cool. And the violence in here, though, is not 
something that everybody can handle. I will say that there are some very, very intense violent scenes in here. So if you can handle a lot of violence, gore, very descriptive things like that, this is where you want to be. <laughs> Even I got a little like, um, yeah, sometimes, um, and I can handle some stuff. So, but it made sense for the story. It didn't feel like it was just there for shock value. Like it made sense. And man, there was, it was just, this hit me in all the feels and I absolutely loved it. It was thrilling and I cannot wait to read more by this author for sure. And anything that he writes again in the future, I will be picking up because I was just blown away by this book. So huge five stars on this one. Okay. And uh, the last one that was another five star prediction is As Bright as Heaven by Susan Meisner. This is a historical fiction that follows a family that moves to Philadelphia in the early 1900s, right before the Spanish flu pandemic breaks out in America. And you see them dealing with that, the consequences, the aftermath, um, how it affects their family, how it affects their friends and their neighborhood and the city in general. And this one I listened to on audio. Cassandra Morris is the narrator and she did a great job as well. Um, so this one is interesting because I really liked it. I really did. It wasn't a five-star read for me though. It felt like when I finished it, I didn't have that thrilling, like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. It was so great. It was great, but I wasn't completely blown away by it. So it just didn't feel like a five-star read when I finished it. Although I still feel like it should be. <laughs> so I don't know what it was. So I, I did give it a four-star, but I did, I did really like it at the same time though. So I really like the characters. You're getting different perspectives from the females in this family. So all the female perspectives you're getting and you're seeing them, you know, making friendships, making and building relationships with other people, falling in love with other people. So you're seeing all that happen all through this flu pandemic that is, you know, big time happening and a lot of similarities to what we are still going through today with COVID, with, you know, mask wearing and staying away from people and distancing and, you know, everything shutting down and doing all that stuff. But um, so a lot of it was definitely relatable to things that are that were happening here for the past two years. So that's been um, that was interesting to read from as well. So overall, I really, really liked it. It just wasn't a five star, but I did really like it a lot. So interesting. Okay. Um, and then I had read some pretty heavy, pretty heavy books. So I needed something light and fun and quick. And so I actually had this sitting on my nightstand from the library. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. And that is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. This is a graphic novel. And I read this in 30 minutes. I mean, like, Literally, I sat down, I opened it and I finished it really, really quickly. So uh, this follows... Our two main characters, what are their names? Uh, Charlie and Nick. And they are in high school. They go to an all-boys school. Um, Charlie? Yes, Charlie. See, I'm trying to get them straight. <laughs> um, he is openly gay. Everybody knows it. And uh, Nick is not. Nick doesn't know what he is yet, but he knows that he cares about Charlie. So these two meet in a class and they strike up a friendship and they start hanging out. And Charlie quickly starts to develop a crush on Nick. Um, and Nick is not sure how he feels because he's very confused about his feelings for Charlie, but he knows that he cares about him. So that's kind of where this first volume ends up. And um, yeah, it was fine. Um, I, I've just heard like everybody rave about this and like, it's amazing. And oh my gosh, and blah, blah, blah. And I thought it was fine. It was cute. Definitely. Um, the two were cute together, but it didn't blow my mind. It wasn't anything groundbreaking. I don't think it was just a cute male, male romance for me. So like, it wasn't, I'm not going to scream from the rooftops about this. I think if you're interested in it, read it. It's a really quick read, um, but like, I'm not gonna keep reading the volumes. So like, I don't feel like I need to keep going. Um, so it was fine. It was a good 30 minute read. So this one got three stars for me. 
Okay, and the last one that I finished <laughs> is This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. This one was sent to me from Amanda from The Curly Weeder. She sent me this for our Christmas in July book exchange last year, which was fun. And we also read this for our book club, my in-person book club here locally. And this one is a historical book as well. And this follows two brothers who are orphaned and they are sent to this school that is mostly pretty much made up of Native American children. And these two boys are white, so they definitely stand out at this place. Um, and it definitely follows that storyline of these children being abused and not taken care of. And um, you see that happening in here. One of the boys um, makes a life defending decision <laughs> in this book and sets a lot of things in motion to the point where they had to go on the run. And so the two brothers and then two other people from the school go on the run together. And so you follow them basically trying to elude the police and try not to be captured and sent back because people are looking for them because of what he did. So uh, you're following all of that. Uh, this one was really good. This is another one that I listened to on audio. Narrator for this one was Scott Brick, and he's fantastic. I've listened to books by him before, and he is a great audiobook narrator. Uh, so I did enjoy the audiobook of this one. And yeah, it was really good. Um, I never, like, I wasn't sure where the story was going for quite a while, which I don't mind. I was just kind of like enjoying it. And then like the ending was great. <laughs> and it just went in a place where I wasn't expecting that to happen. So that was good. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, again, I didn't end up thinking, like feeling this was a five-star read. Definitely. Um, I did really, really like it, but it wasn't like it hasn't become a favorite or anything. So I don't think I'm going to hang on to this one for the long run, but it was really good. I did really like it. So I will say that. Um, so it was a four star. Okay, and last is my DNF. And I'm really sad about this, you guys. This makes me so sad, but uh, I DNF The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. Um, I was listening to this one on audio as well. And the audio was fine. Um, the audio didn't bother me it's the story. I was so confused and I got 25% through this book. So I got a quarter of the way through this book and I had no idea what was going on. So the premise of this book is that we are following two enslaved men living in the South and they are in love and they are in a relationship. And from what I'm understanding, uh, everybody knows, like everybody on the plantation knows that they are a thing, they are together. So it's not like a big secret. Um, but then one of the other slaves ends up becoming kind of like a prophet where he starts trying to get into the good graces of the plantation owner, um, just to kind of get more favors and more favoritism that way. And so he starts preaching all these things and starts making everybody question whether or not what, um, they are doing is okay or not morally. And here's the thing. I kept getting so lost because we kept following different perspectives and they changed so consistently that I had no idea where, like who we were reading from and what timeline we were reading from, because it also, it switches between characters and timelines. And it was so much that I was like, I have no idea what's actually going on here. So it wasn't following a act an actual storyline. And I just got so confused. I literally was just listening to it. And it wasn't an issue of me not paying attention. I was paying attention. I had to. But I was just like, I don't know what's going on. I'm very confused. I'm very lost. I don't know who we're reading from. I don't know what timeline we're in. Why are we skipping around so much? And it was, it was just really, really difficult for me to follow. So I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I DNF'd it. Mm, I like, it's just, it was, if it was shorter, maybe I would try to stick with it and see if I could catch up <laughs> or try to figure it out. But like over 400 pages of being confused, I just wasn't really into that. Um, it makes me sad though, because I had really high hopes for this one and ugh, this cover, you guys, like I would frame this cover and put it on my wall. It's so beautiful, but the inside 
definitely does not match the cover for me. So it makes me sad. Okay, guys, that is it for my April wrap up. Some really, really good five star books and then, a, you know, a couple disappointing <laughs> books, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, so those are my results for April. Pretty good, I think. I'm excited for May coming up and to do some good reading in the month of May as well. So please let me know down below if you've read any of these books. Let me know your thoughts. Again, if you want more in-depth thoughts of some of the ones I've already talked about before, I will have all those videos linked down below. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day. Bye.